It's big dog season. And you can't stay still because you want it. Mm-hmm. Talk that talk, George. You still scraping your plate because you're hungry. Mm-hmm. Talk that talk. is being charged with racketeering conspiracy, alleging he ran an enterprise that he engaged in sex trafficking, forced labor, or kidnapping, arson, and other crimes. He's also charged uh, with sex trafficking by force. I want to bring in ABC's Phil Lipoff, ABC News contributor and serious XM radio host Mike Muse, and ABC News legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer for more. Uh, Phil, give us the details on this indictment. So we're just looking through it right now. You hit the highlights, but right off the bat, you know they they go through all of his uh, all of the names that because they have to do that in indictment. They have to name all the names he's sure. ever gone by, and then they talk about um, he relied on his employees and resources to influence the multifaceted business and what he would do. They they allege that there were among other crimes sex trafficking, forced labor kidnapping, they allege arson, bribery, obstruction of justice. They go on to talk about how he would f abuse women. They talk about kicking and punching and dragging and forcing them to have, they, they, they talked about um, highly coordinated um, sexual acts with male Prostitutes. I mean, this is this is extensive. This seems to be everything that we have heard about in allegations. I haven't been through the entire thing yet. We're all looking through it, but so far, what I can tell just in the first couple of pages is um, most of the things they are alleging in this indictment we have heard about. And Phil, I'm going to give you a chance to go through. I know I put you on the spot there, literally, as we got that indictment. Now, uh, Brian, walk me through legally. We've heard did he deny these charges? Uh, these accusations really throughout. Now they're officially charges. His attorney also before the indictment said that he's an imperfect person, but that he's not a criminal, again, denying this. So what do you make of the fact that we're now seeing in black and white what the government is trying to charge him with? Yes, it makes a lot more interesting as to how to dissect this case. We have three charges. We have a racketeering charge, or what we also hear of as, as RICO. The second count being, as, as Phil articulated, what we all thought might be there. The sex trafficking through force, fraud, or coercion. And then, of course, the transportation of prostitution. Now, those are the first uh, initial charges. That are, could be more coming down the line, depending on how this investigation goes. But this is what we know so far. When it comes to these charges, we're looking at life uh, in prison as a maximum for at least the second count and potentially the first as well. Uh, but also when it comes to RICO, how they're uh, uh, describing this enterprise as its way of promoting, enhancing, and protecting the brand, and that sex and sex trafficking was a part of it, we're going to see all the ugly and, and gruesome parts of, of Bad Boy Entertainment that surround this uh, alleged abuse in a way that I don't think many of us are prepared for. Ryan, can you talk about the degree to these charges? Because any kind of sexual abuse or sexual assault is bad enough, but it sounds like what they're describing is something that was really premeditated and coordinated. Yeah, so when you're talking about RICO, you're talking about a criminal enterprise, and criminal enterprises can be anything. Oftentimes, you associate RICO with like the mafia or, or things of that nature, money and, and, and violence. This seems to be more in line to, if you want to draw a comparison, uh, to that of R. Kelly, where there was an organization within the music industry that kind of was part and parcel. They interacted with each other in a way that you couldn't see where the music started and the alleged abuse um, ended. Uh, that it's almost the trafficking and transporting of women for the pleasure, for increasing the brand, uh, for potentially even, hey, we want to we want to get a new artist. So you know what? We're going to traffic this girl that he might be interested in in a way of attracting and and keeping this artist in a way to grow the brand and make money off of it. They are alleging that it is so intertwined that it's almost business as usual to do this trafficking and transporting. And, and at least that's what I'm reading from the initial allegations in this in this indictment. We think of Diddy, we think of the music, but his influence goes far beyond that. How significant is it to have charges of this magnitude against someone who is this powerful? It's huge. And just kind of give context to what, what Phil and what Brian is talking about. Diane, is in the conversation that we were just having a few moments ago. What I'm looking at from this unsealed indictment, of course, we need to learn a little bit more, um, is it seems like Cassie was such a big part of this indictment. A lot of these indictments comes from the lawsuit and allegations that Cassie was actually discussing. In particular, you think about arson. I know people are probably wondering where is the arson coming from. In Cassie's lawsuit, she alleged 
that Diddy threatened to blow up a former, a current rapper, Kid Cudi's car, uh, to which Kid Cudi's, Kid Cudi's car did blow up in an explosion, to which Kid Cudi then gave a statement and said that he can confirm that actually happened. I'm thinking that's where the reference of the arson comes from. I'm also thinking about the male prostitutes. Cassie alleges um, that during that time, Diddy would force her to look on the internet to solicit male prostitutes in order and to gave and engage in sexual activities. I'm assuming that is where uh, the male prostitute dynamic is coming from. In terms of kidnapping, Cassie too also too has alleged in her lawsuit the forceful nature to which Sean Combs would remove her um, from events, from social settings, from gatherings, and keep her in essentially in, in housing in order to perform these activities. When it comes to the idea of the enterprise, to kind of translate that uh, to what Brian Bruckmeyer just said so eloquently, culturally, what Diddy was. Diddy was the kind of person where if you were in the music industry, you wanted to be around. If you were trying to make your mark as an a &R executive, if you were trying to make your mark in the marketing, um, if you were trying to make your mark in order to hang out with him, to go to his home in the white parties in, in the Hamptons, that's how much of a pull Diddy had. I cannot underscore how Diddy had this concept and this idea of the Midas touch. And Diane, being a part of the music industry, being around Diddy, being around those events, being at his home in the Hamptons, being at his home in Miami, I kept firsthand accounts, not of these allegations, I didn't see any of that, mm. but how desperate people were to be, to be in, his in his orbit. orbit. I can't underscore that enough. You think about the 40th birthday party that he had that I went to at Cipriani's. I mean, people, they had Mariah Carey, you had, uh, I remember the royal family was invited. I can't remember if they attended or not, right? But you had those type of individuals wanting to be there coming you think about Diddy runs the city with marathons. This is a type of influence and pull uh, that he had. And so when I think about the, the racketeering and the enterprise dynamic, it's just about people who wanted to be near him and who was willing to do anything for Diddy to give them affirmation and recognition. Yeah, and Phil, as you're going through that indictment, what is that anything? What sticks out to you? Well, I mean, Mike laid it out. I just want to touch on, on one thing that you didn't, and this is the, the violence toward women in this one section. It says, uh, on multiple occasions from 2009 on, Combs assaulted women, among other things, striking, punching, dragging, throwing objects, and kicking them. These assaults at times were witnessed, and then they go into the 2016 mm -hmm. video that we saw of Cassie. So you're right, a lot of this stems uh, from Cassie's uh, allegations, but you see, I mean, they've got it laid out yeah. there. And then Phil, to what you just mentioned too, in terms of the physical violence, not only is Cassie part of this, but also too, the recent lawsuit that we saw from former Danny Kane group member, Dawn Richard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dawn Richard also says she witnessed these violent acts too as well. All right, Phil, Mike, Brian, thank you. Good morning. I decided to come into the sunroom to do the video there, and I can see my little plant back there dying. I've been keeping the live water, and it. it's, it's, it's living. That other one thing's a fake plant. It's the outdoors. A lot of construction going on around my house today. Not my house, but it, the house behind me, somebody bought an old farmhouse. You know, they paid $375,000. I don't know what the fuck was going on. I don't know how I stepped through this. I should have been on top of that because that would have been is directly behind my house. I think it's like seven acres. It was just, but basically, you it was just an old farmhouse, and now they're clearing the line. You can see the farmhouse, a beautiful hundred year old plus farmhouse. They put a new roof on it, so I don't know if they're gonna renovate it. Um, but it's seven acres back there, and I had a bunch of friends who looked at it. But you couldn't get to it because the road was covered with all this brush. You had to get out your car and go through our sides and say, forget it. But I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I should have, I think I was in the middle of renovating this house when that went up for sale. My hands are just too full with this house. But I would have loved to have gotten that addition because that is, it literally runs directly behind my home the full length. And now that they've cleared all the brush away, you can see the creek on their side and on my side. It's beautiful. I mean, I have to go down there and take a video. But anyway, Sean Puffy Combs. Can you imagine having all that money and wealth? All that money, fame, and wealth. And you decide that you're going to use it to assault, rape, harm, um, 
sex traffic, drug. I mean, I'm, I'm, re I'm reading all this stuff this morning that he's charged with. And um, I'm reading all this stuff. And, I'm, and, and I know some of you are probably going to have a take difficulty with what they've charged this man with. If these allegations are true, which they probably are, you know, Shad and Puffy Combs, R. Kelly, all these, Bill Cosby, all these men over the years who have abused women and men, use sex as a weapon, well, weaponize sex in, in their relationships with people. You get all that money, and the only thing you can think about is I mean, and now let's see, because Sean and one pub daddy, I don't know what name he goes by now. I mean, this man had a, a awesome run. Clothing line, record companies, big stars, music, just a lot of good, a lot of crazy shit that took place in this man's life for it to end like this. But it all boils down to, once again, the choices that we make as individuals. And he made some bad choices. He made some very bad choices. Let's just keep it real, y'all. He made some bad choices that have put him in this predicament that he's in there right now. I wish him the best. I hope, I, I, I hope these allegations are not true, but if the feds can pick your ass up and charge you with all this stuff, they got to be some type of truth. They just, they're not out here on winging it. But imagine having all that fame and fortune and wealth and you squander it you squander it because of violence and sex. You know, years ago, well, not even years, yeah, about a decade ago, I remember I met a guy at the gym. He does escorting. And he told me he had flew out to a Diddy party. Back, this is when he had the invite party. This is when any of these allegations and stuff came out. And he said after the bike, after he, because he told me this, right in Atlantic Station, he went out to a party, he was thrown out there, he did escort, he was a gay porn actor who did escorting. And he had been flown to New York and went to some party. And afterwards, it turned into a sex party. He was fucking everybody. He was, I was like, wow, I remember him telling me this. And at that time, I was more not inclined really to believe it. I don't know why I just do little things. Why don't they want your scraggly ass there? Yeah. But I guess he was in porn, not pornography, and he had a lot of porn out there at the time. Um, crazy part is now he's very sick. Um, like he's been really having a lot of mental health issues and, um, and physical health issues. I, look, I always go look at we were pretty close for a minute there, but then when he started having all them issues and stuff, and um, I, mean, I was suggesting him to go get help, you know, there's help out there if you want it. I guess he just wasn't really, you know, a lot of black men just don't know the help. That there's help out there if you want it. But you gotta be in a position to receive and, and want to change these pet behaviors. But this individual was living with HIV. He almost died from that. He had he had all these health issues going on, and um, then he was on drugs, and it was just problem after problem after problem after problem. And I was just like, dude, get it together. You know, do you want to live or not? So it would be very interesting to see how all this plays out with. Put up in the next few years. I'm sure this is, it's these it's gonna be a lengthy court battle here. And um I one hundred percent it's going to be a lengthy court battle here. Um there's gonna be a lengthy court because he's not gonna go easy, but uh, you know, I can't remember how everything went down. Uh, well, everything went down with um, with um, R. Kelly. How he was arrested and what led to what, and how all this stuff went place. But I, I you know, 
it just it just makes you wonder. It just makes you wonder. But again, you make you make you make your bed. You gotta lay in it. If this is if this is the type of lifestyle that this man chose to live, and he's providing drugs and prostitutes and sex parties, and, and, not, and to me, this nothing that sounds illegal to me. But I don't know what made this stuff illegal. Of course, the drug trafficking, and you buying drugs, you're trafficking people for sexual purposes with these people, underage people. But that's the thing I'm, I'm just curious. I know my friend who was a, who, the escort from Atlantic Station. He's definitely not, was not an underage man. I mean, I mean, I recently met a guy at the gym here in Atlanta, and um. Guy works out. He, you know, we were in the gym working out. He, I met this guy, big muscular guy working out, and we become kind of friends here recently. I don't even say friends, but he's inviting me to these parties. Like every weekend, he invites me to these parties, and it's either a sex party or a nude pool party, or it's always something that's like a dark room party or some type of. I'm like, what is this mess? You gonna come? Uh, no, nigga, I'm not coming to any of this stuff. And he sends me these flyers, and I'm like, I'm the store. I said, this is all the stuff you go to? Well, a lot of times he's like, I buy a bartender there. And I'm like, okay. So it's either an, an, a, a nude pool party or some type of sex party or some type of sex club or some type of dungeon party. And if you saw this person, you would think of this as like a regular black guy and nothing nice body works out, always in the gym. When the sun go down, there's some weird shit going on. And then you always get mad because you think, I put you on the list. I, you know, I, I, I put you on the VIP list. And I'm, not come, I'm like, dude, I've already told you this. Ain't no sense you put me on that list. I'm not coming. And I've noticed this. More and more people are, in, are involved in these types of parties here in Atlanta. Very sex related. Or everybody's got to be naked. Or, y'all, I don't have nothing against nudity, honey. But I have a problem. Where do we sit down? I'm, I'm butt-ass naked. Do we get to sit down someplace? What are we, how are we holding our drinks? Where are my phone at? Where are my car keys at? Do we have to, do at least get a towel to wrap around myself? It's cold out here. Why do I have to be naked? Everybody got to be naked. Well, what if I don't want to be naked? You, I, can some of us wear clothes if we want to be clothed? Well, I, I don't mind seeing naked people. You know, I'm just sitting there looking at a bunch of naked people. But goodness. I've been to nude beaches before, but I didn't take my clothes off other than to change my changing. I was naked all five minutes to changing clothes. That's it. And I laid on the beach and watched all the naked people walk by. And it was a lot of naked people. A lot of naked people just down in Miami. So if you into that type of stuff, if Puff Daddy was into this type of stuff, he should not have forced people to participate. He shouldn't have drugged anybody that's saying he drugged people he could have found women participants this guy I'm talking about this nigga fine as hell this guy that's inviting me to all this crazy shit this man is very attractive these women running around here very attractive all you can do is go on twitter and look at me i'll do it all kinds of shit men women cats and all they all just fucking like wild animals why not find people who are willing participants that want to participate in what you're trying to do? Like, for example, this guy hit me up. I'm not interested. Move on. No sense inviting me to that because I'm not going. I don't have an interest in it. Find people who are interested in things that you like to do. If you like new naked parties and orgies and all, whatever they are, I don't know what they're doing. And invite folks who like that type of stuff. Don't go after people who are just not interested. And repeatedly sending flyers and invitations. I don't, I'm not interested. I don't want to go. You know, I, I'm at a point in my life, but first off, now if they had a viewing section, I could sit there and have my drink and sit there and watch and everybody, well, give me my glasses. Go get my glasses off that night stand. You know, I would sit there and watch. <laughs> Fully clothed, you know, from a distance. You know, what are they doing over there? Wow, I can't believe it. But Puff Daddy, Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, and so many people force people to do something they didn't want to do. 
What's that guy, Darren Rusher? Who's the guy who was drugging these men and women and raping them? He was he was a football player, wealthy football player, all his money flying all over the place. And he was drugging these women and sexually assaulting them. And he ended up being federal prison all these years. I think it's Darren something, I can't remember. I never understood that one. Nice looking brother. Why are you doing this? Why? You ain't got to drug nobody. And then when willingly gave up, whatever, they, you, you, you got to find people who want to who participate in your bullshit. But maybe, maybe I, you know, I think maybe people get, I think these guys get a kick out of, a, a fetish out of assaulting people. Cassie said she didn't want to do any of this type of stuff with these porn actors. She was forced to have raw, unprotected sex with porn actors that they all knew were possibly HIV positive. There's a lot going on here. A lot of wheels spinning here. Did this woman end up with something behind all this? Because she was forced to have sex with all these men. Why did he watch? Because he had a fetish. She was forced to have sex with all these male escorts. Drug. Not just her. See, this is where the problem comes in. You're forcing somebody to do something they don't want to do. Text messages, video, recordings, all this stuff saying no, no, no. But you're still forcing them to do something they don't want to do. This is where the problem comes in. Now, again, how the feds get involved, I mean, you got to look at it because I was listening to it this morning. I'm still trying to figure out what the federal charges are that we don't know yet. We will know later on today. I think they might have released it. I don't know. I had all this drama going on over here at this house. Um, I got it this morning and decided I'd change all my linen on that damn bed. Oh, change these damn, change all that linen out. I said, I didn't change all this linen out. That shit took forever. I don't know. I got it started. I said, I got to take all the strip this bed down and put all the stuff on there. So when I come back from the gym, I can just get in bed. You ever strip your bed down and you come back at midnight and say, oh, shit, I got to put this bed back together. I made I tore it all down, threw everything in the washing machine, and I put it all back together. Everything new. Everything all fresh and clean on them. I come back from the gym, I take a shower and get my ass in bed. I had to deal with that later. But it will be very interesting to see how this plays out with Puff Daddy. Or P. Diddy or whoever his name is, Diddy. Why didn't he leave? You know, when I heard he was arrested in New York, I'm thinking, I think I would have fled. Like, why didn't he leave the United States? Why, why sit around here? Yeah, shit, you got all that money. I'm probably playing about here. You know, because that was, there is some other record producer. He ain't came back to the United States. He left here. He left here under some very crazy sexual um, allegations, too. Um, Russell. Def Jam, Def Jam Records, Russell, the guy who owned Def Jam Records, I believe, he can't come back to the United States right now because he is also possibly facing some criminal charges related to sexually assaulting people and stuff like that. So he ain't getting back here. Russell Simmons. I understand he didn't ran out of the United States too. P. Diddy should have ran too. But I don't know, you know, you know maybe P. Diddy, Diddy could be innocent of these charges. I don't, we're about to find out. It's going to be a very lengthy court battle, very expensive, but he got the money. You're living in $30 million houses. I mean, it's like, you're living this dream lifestyle. That's my yard guy, if y'all can hear me. He made it over here, finally. What's today, Tuesday? Normally he comes on Wednesdays. Did he live in a million dollar, multi-million dollar homes in the Hamptons? Los Angeles, Miami, you live in this, you're a billionaire, and this is what you do? It's disgusting. It's kind of like, why? It's just like this very attractive guy that's been hitting me up trying to get me to come to these parties that, that, that he participates in. Damn, your ass is a pest. So... Anyway, y'all can hear the yard guy. He getting closer to me. He cutting the grass down there. Try to buy it. Only knowing all the headache involved with this nice, nice, this house over here. Good Lord. Anyway, we got a billion leaves that then fell in this damn yard. I think that's why he came here early because 
all these leaves out here have started falling early. China is they everywhere. I'm like, man, what happened just that fast? And, uh, he said it was a hot because it was so hot this summer. The leaves and all, yeah, them leaves and, and dropped, dropped off them damn trees. You know, we we there there are leaves everywhere. I was out there taking the dollars and these leaves and came off these trees. So you know, they're trying to get ready to start the process of getting all these leaves up out of here. He does a great job. There's something else I'm gonna say that I, I want. I may I may do a separate video about this. I don't know why you all keep saying that these immigrants, these Spanish and Latinos, don't like black people. I don't know where you all get that from. I have been actively involved with Latino and Hispanic workers since the mid '90s. I've never had an issue with them in regards to whether they dislike. I don't. But I'm in Georgia here, so I don't know. I'm not. And I, I have never ever had an issue with a Hispanic or Latino person in my entire life. So when y'all saying these people hate black folks, where are y'all getting this from? Maybe it's, maybe it's a California thing or something. I've never encountered that here in Georgia. I just don't know where all this is coming from. But do a video about that. I just think that's just more rhetoric of hate that, that seems to be spread towards immigrants. The Haitians hate black people. The Haitians, they don't like this and they don't like that, but I've never encountered any of that. And, um, all the immigrants I've ever encountered, even here in Clarkston, were kind, loving people who would just want, you know, they, they're just misplaced from their home. I've met them all, all types of races, and you know, when I lived, when I was lived near Clarkston, in particularly, um, I've never encountered that type of hate. So I'm gonna do a video about that because I think it's ridiculous for you all to keep spreading nonsense and lies. I'm just sick of that. You do not you can go to y'all can go to them other folks' channel and spread lies and hate, but don't do that on my channel. I don't like that. You would be deleted and blocked. I can't stand hatred and lies and bullshit. I'm just sick of it. Some of the people are proudly pushing that stuff. Go there. I'm not, I'm not going to allow that on my comments that hate towards one another. The bullshit that these, the Trump and, and, and company are putting out there. In the, I, don't want, I don't like it because it's, going, it's dangerous and it's going to harm somebody. Somebody's going to get hurt and harmed by this ignorant bunch of lies and bullshit. But anyway, today is Tuesday. It is September 17th. The year is 2024. I didn't even think I was going to start off the video with that. But it is a gorgeous Tuesday. And I got to... Oh, shit, I'm going to put on them damn eggs. I'm going to make some breakfast. Well, I'm going to make me some breakfast so I can take this medicine, this prednisone. I'm finishing up that over the next day or two. I think today is two pills. Hip feels fine. Um, uh, inflammation's gone. Um, I feel a whole lot better. That's what I was just like. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's... But anyway, my hip feels a lot better. My shoulder's feeling better. We'll see. Anyway, today is Tuesday, September the 17th, the year 2024. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. I'm out and have a beautiful Tuesday.